Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be looking at the new adaptation of Salem's Lot, that being the Max exclusive feature film. Now I do have a Salem's Lot playlist covering my thoughts on the source material as well as the prior adaptations, so you can check that out if you want to first. But for those of you who are unfamiliar, Salem's Lot is a supernatural horror film based on the Stephen King novel of the same name. And it follows the story of Ben Mears, a writer who returns to his hometown of Jerusalem's Lot in search of inspiration for his next book. Meanwhile, the town's residents are slowly being turned into vampires. So going into this movie, I have to say I was somewhat skeptical. You know, the film was originally supposed to get a theatrical release as far back as 2022, followed by the announcement that it would instead be released on the streaming service Max. Topped off with a few early lukewarm reviews, and I was almost 100% convinced that this was going to be a stinker. That being said, I genuinely enjoyed this adaptation. It's not perfect, but it's way better than I expected, especially as a fan of the novel. So let's get into it. So first of all, I really enjoyed Gary Doberman's directing, especially the way he shoots the day scenes. You know, they remind me a lot of some of the more recent Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies like Leatherface and Netflix's Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. The night scenes do somewhat recapture the atmosphere of the novel and of the 1979 miniseries. And he's also good with handling the scares in this movie. You know, he did a good job in recreating some iconic scenes and in some instances putting his own spin on them. I mean, in my opinion, the gravedigger scene in this version is the best version of that scene, period. I also thought the performances were pretty decent here. Sure, you don't exactly have the most high profile cast here, but there are a few fairly well known names here, such as Mackenzie Lee in the role of Susan Norton, Alfred Woodard as Dr. Cody, and of course, Philo Absek as Richard Straker. But pretty much everyone in the cast did a great job in bringing their characters to life, whether or not you're familiar with them. There's even a couple of interesting creative liberties taken with the source material, such as the crosses that light up based on how strong a person's faith is, as well as the climax which was much bigger and a bit more action packed this time around. But the film is still, for the most part, largely faithful to the book, to the point where they went back to placing a smaller emphasis on Barlow, taking the less is more approach. Now there are a couple of things holding this adaptation back from perfection. First of all, the fact that it's a two hour movie. According to the director, the film's initial cut clocked in at nearly three hours. And so the studio ordered him to trim it down to just under two hours. As a result, the film feels incredibly rushed in places and a lot of the character development ends up being watered down. Hopefully a director's cut could remedy this in the future. And there's a couple of nitpicks as well, such as the occasionally clunky CGI, and the fact that certain situations in the film don't exactly evoke the reactions that you would expect from the characters. You know, in some instances, they don't react at all, almost as if they're used to what's happening, which in the real world is, let's face it, somewhat unrealistic. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Salem's Lot movie adaptation. It's definitely an improvement over the 2004 miniseries in my opinion, but let's be real, the 1979 miniseries still takes the crown. So next time, I'm going to be returning to my Lost Retrospective with a review of Season 3, so look forward to that very soon. Thank you all for watching guys, please be sure to like the video, share it and subscribe, ring the bell, take care and I'll see you soon.